Hi, I'm Hillel Chio. And I'm Diana Christian. And we're here to talk about what makes Introduction to Neurobiology uh, special and different. And we hope that this brief video will help guide you so that you can be successful this coming semester in the course. I like to call it Survival Tips for Neurobio. Okay, so I'm going to basically interview Diana, who's taken not just this course, but another course with me, and is kind of used to surviving our particular way of teaching, and um, let her talk about how it works. So let me start with this question. How is this course different from other courses? So these courses are structured completely differently. They're, they're completely, for me, they were completely new, because um, the average course is a lecture. You go in, you're lectured, you try to stay awake, um, and when the test rolls around, you study really hard the night before, you memorize all of your stuff, you take the test, you do your best, um, and then at least what happens for me is I usually forget it. Because you, you need to know it for this course, but after this course is done, it's over. You're not going to get tested on it anymore. But you don't tend to forget, like, learning how to ride a bicycle or swimming or something like that. No, and I think that's, it's like riding a bike. Um, and that's, that's kind of how this course worked for me. Because the way this course works is you do a little background reading. Um, you come into class and then you're given a simulation that you can sort of play around with. And through that simulation, um, you discover these properties of neuroscience. And because you're the one sort of actively learning by trial and error, um, it sticks, at least for me, a lot. And I think that's, that goes back into sort of how we learn, is we learn by doing. And that's the best way for us to okay. learn. So you've explained, I think, why the course is structured the way it is, which is very helpful. So how do we teach you? Um, and what's, what's it like day to day in the course? Day to day, you're doing lots of problem sets based on what you've read the night before. So what's the sequence you go through? So you read the night before. Um, the the I think the reading is very eloquently formatted because it's all written by you and it's free, which is really nice. And and how is it compared to a t typical textbook? It's much more concise. During textbooks, there's tons of, I hate reading textbooks, because there's tons of stuff that I'm like, just get to the point. Come on. I've got three other things I have to be doing. But the, the reading in the neuro wiki is, I think it's very concise. Everything there is important. Um, and so you've done the reading the so you've night done before, the reading. come to class, you, know, you said problem sets. Mm -hmm. And so you, you work with your partner to answer problem sets. Um, by doing simulations mm -hmm. and writing down your findings, your answers to these questions in your notebook. Um, and then once you're all done with that, uh, we will be coming around in class and asking you conceptual questions on, so that we can gauge your understanding, okay. so that we can help you through it sort of if you don't understand it. So what's the goal of having our having these questions to you? What is it that we would like you to achieve as a student so that you become, by the end of the semester, you, 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 uh, you're able to do? The questions, I think, sort of work you through um, discovering all of the material. Mm -hmm. And through that discovery, it's our hope that we can sort of talk to you as equals. Is the so way. we want you to become experts yeah. in an area. Is that the idea? Mm -hmm. I think. So it's like having a conversation with a colleague by the end of the semester. Hopefully, wow. hopefully. That's a little scary. It it is, and it's one of the things that's kind of scary about it is that you're in charge of your own learning in this course. Is that we sort of give you all the tools and orient you in the right direction, um, but it's really new, sort of being expected to learn all of this stuff not in a lecture, to not have it just handed to you. Um, so I think you're starting to talk about, it sounds like there's some downsides that a student may experience if they're not kind of getting what the course is about. What are, what are those problems, potentially? Well, it's, it's daunting to be going through this alone, kind of, because you're not being handed it, you're figuring it out, right. which is 
one of the reasons I think why you get a teammate so that you stroll through together and you can help each other mm -hmm. as you go. Mm -hmm. um, the other sort of downside is it does take more time to figure it out on your own, to figure out these concepts through the simulations. And we, we expedite the process by asking you the right questions that lead up to it. Mm -hmm. But we're not just going to hand you information. So what's my motivation to do all this extra work? It sounds like a lot of work. And it is, but it was, for me, it was really exciting work because when I got to the final product, it made so much sense. And I wasn't just memorizing something. I sort of, I felt like I truly understood it. So the focus is on understanding. Yeah. Good. And understanding is really important. And the other thing, uh, the other reason that's useful is that through this understanding, you can then, you, you understand it to such a degree that you can apply it to other things. So is this why there aren't tests in the, you know, there are no midterms, there's no finals. I mean, there are quizzes, but there aren't any actual tests. I think the reason, the, the big reason that there are quizzes, sort of really quick questions, conceptual questions that the TAs ask you every every class instead of tests is because everything builds on each other. And I think tests, if you don't understand sort of the basics in the test or you're sort of shaky on those, then everything else that follows that you're also exposed to understand in the test is also shaky. Um, and so because everything builds on each other in this class, the sort of day-to-day -day checking that you're keeping up is really important. Um, and I think the test, tests, written tests are often dicey at best in terms of, I th personally, I think, really gauging how well you understand something. Right. Whereas if you can use the material for something. Or if you can talk like a colleague to someone who understands the material. Then you probably do understand it. I think it's a better gauge of your understanding. Okay, this is very helpful. Um, so what would be, uh, you mentioned teams. What would be the rationale for having teams? Well, I already sort of touched on the idea that you're struggling through it together. Um, but you have the TAs and the instructor. Yeah, but you like having someone in the same boat, I think, opens up a lot of tools that you can use to grow. How would you say, how would you feel about asking questions of a peer as opposed to asking a question of an instructor? Exactly. If, if you're a peer, then it's much less intimidating to ask a question because you don't feel like someone who's inferior because um, you're, you're both in the same... You're both struggling at the same time to try yeah. to understand. Yeah, and so it's much easier to ask and answer questions. And then there are all the sort of other benefits of teams of like, this is a person with completely different understanding as you. And so if you understand biology and they understand engineering, then you can each use those strengths in a different way to help each other understand just sort of the entirety of the, the concept. Um, and you grow together and you question each other. And for me, it was also an extra drive to do what I was expected to do because I knew like, I knew every day that I needed to go to class not only for my own sake, but for my team members' sake, is that they're relying on you to be there and help them through it. And So that gives you a sense of added responsibility, Yeah. which is, on one hand, a bit of a hassle, but on the other hand, is a, is a spur and a motivator. Yeah. So I, I, this, I want to pursue this a little bit. What makes a team work well? What's the key thing you advise someone? To make a team work, you need communication, which is really to make any team anywhere work or any sort of collaborative thing. You need to be able to communicate. Um, so for me, my when I had a successful team, what we, we did is we could communicate really clearly, like, this is what I expect of you. Like, let's both have this half of the problem set done before we come to class, and then we'll work through the really hard stuff together or something like that, that communication um, was incredibly important. And if one of us didn't respect that, if we came unprepared, then the other team partners really just sort of stuck. 
because they have to wait for you to catch up, and it's a huge hassle. It's annoying. So that um, actually raises us. What happens if a team isn't working? It's yeah. I think it's lack of communication. How, so let's say a student is now caught in the middle of a semester, and the team is not working well. What tips would you give them to try to get it to, to work better? How, what what's the sort of the process that you think you should follow? I think if they discuss what they expect from the other one, it would be that would be the most sort of helpful thing to do. If you sit down and you say, okay, like. I feel like we're not utilizing our time as best we can and we really need to be doing this in order to sort of completely take advantage of the opportunity that we're given by working in teams or things like I really do work better on my own like let's figure out how we incorporate that but as long as you keep communicating I think you can come up with a with a nice sort of situation. What role could the TAs or the instructor play in helping to keep teams functioning? We, as the TAs, we try to keep, we try to help make sure that you can communicate is kind of a, a thing that we do. And we're here to, to help you communicate and to ask you what you need and... Right. And in fact, if, if a member of a team comes to us and expresses concerns, how do we respond to that? Um, we, well, we try to mediate we try to help you communicate together so that you can Correct. sort of solve it out. But communication is, is really key and it can lead to some really sort of helpful insights from your teammates because they can ask questions. And one of the things I've learned um, in preparing to be a TA is that you don't, like you're told this all the time, but you don't understand something until you have to teach it. Like teaching something to someone else is really what allows you to completely process and understand the material. So you get, it's an advantage in that sense to have a teammate. It really is. And again, it's really helpful to have someone to work through the process with you. And it's not necessary for that to be the TA. Like, the TAs are here to help you if you get stuck and to help guide you along. But we put so much time and effort into making these simulations and making the problem sets and doing the videos and writing the textbook and all of that stuff and we've already done all that and now it's really your like it's the students responsibility to work together and learn the material so you're, you're, it sounds like you're giving the student the power to decide how how to, how to learn um, how much of the course is in the videos could I just watch the videos and learn everything in the course I don't think so okay so you the need videos, to do it how would you describe the videos? Then? The videos are, they're, they're help for the thought process and the, like the problem sets, I think, is if you're, if you're stuck on concepts, then they help you. They help you with sort of what's happening. But all of, there's a lot of really necessary details that are in the textbook. And so um, what is it about the videos, not necessarily the content, that might be important to learn from watching? Well, there's also the, the video style is what, what's happening in the videos is that I'm working through explaining it um, and I'm doing all of the writing and then you're asking really good questions and this sort of give and take of you're asking the questions that lead me to explain it better is, is kind of a representative sort of glimpse of the course in a way yeah. that I'm the one who's trying to explain it and trying to understand it and trying to show my understanding and you're asking the right questions to help sort of lead me in the right direction. So this sounds like a lot of work, but um, it sounds like I might be motivated to do it. How, how well am I likely to do it if I do the work? So the class I thought had a really solid grading um, concept where Really, if you if you do the work, if you keep caught up with the work, if you do it on time, and you understand the concepts, you're gonna get an A. Is it's other classes you're you're gambling with? Do you understand everything that's gonna be on the test? Which is this thing that you don't know until you get there, and you're you so have a, what you have. You're saying it's kind of transparent. What it is we it's, expect. It's and, very and what transparent. Just, yeah. So to wrap up, what would be the key tips? that you would give to a student so they could do well in this course? 
Well, number one is stay on top of everything. Mm -hmm. Is that if you fall behind, you're you're not going to get anything out of it, especially because your group member is going to go on without you, and everything in this course builds on each other. Um, and the course is structured that way. It's like other courses, you've got very compartmentalized different topics, but this it's a very additive course. Um, so stay on top of it. You can't you can't fall behind, and that's one of the things that sort of drove me to do the work all the time because I was like, well, I've, I've got to do it. Like, I can't put it off. Um, and so that's really important. Um, communicate with your teams. Is that, like, it, if you don't learn how to communicate, then you're in for a, a rough time, possibly. Is that it can, like, and that's true for everything is you need to be able to communicate. Um, so communicate with your teams, especially sort of what you expect. Okay. Make sure you agree upon what to do for next class. Okay. Um, and really it's, this is a course about learning. Like, it's, it's fun to learn if you're the one discovering it. And you really, like, at least for me, I really embraced that, I think, is that we're we're not just doing the run of the mill lectures and it's it's something worth enjoying. It's something that you should have a drive to do and sort of embracing that, I guess. Okay. So Does you're actually sense? saying one of the final tips is have fun. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. And we're here to help. Don't be afraid to ask us for help. Absolutely. Always. So Okay. Good. Enjoy the course. Bye bye.